Hello everyone, welcome back to the Angular University, I'm Vasco. In this lesson we're going to cover one of the many options that you have available with the at4 template syntax. I'm talking about the at empty syntax which allows you to display here something to be displayed in place of your list that you are looping through in case that the list is empty. So let's say that this list here, of course, is, is empty. If that is the case, then we can, for example, display here an age one tag, no elements found, all right? Or no courses found if you want, because the elements of the list are courses. Now, let's see this in action. If I hit command S, and the application gets reloaded, you can see that the list is still being displayed. And that's because we are looping here through an array of courses that comes from this data file here. We have here our array. But instead of giving the at for loop some data, let's give it instead an empty array. And with this, we're going to see that now the at empty placeholder is getting displayed. If you go back here to the component and we create here a copy of our data using the array spread syntax, then we hit command S and we get the list displayed again. So a very nice little feature that we have now available that makes it really simple to create a placeholder for our list. Let's now continue introducing more options of at4. So the first option that we're going to introduce is dollar $index that gives us the index of each element in the array. Let's define here a local index variable that is scoped here to the block at four and let's assign it here the value of dollar $index. So dollar $index is a special variable that contains the index of the element being currently iterated. So this is going to be zero for the first element of the array, one, two, etc. So this index is zero based. Let's go ahead and let's display it on the screen so that we better understand what is going on. So here in our course card component, let's go ahead and let's add here another input that we're going to call index. This is going to be of type number. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's, for example, make this index mandatory by applying here required and setting it to true. Now we are going to go back here to our course card and here we are going to need to apply the index property. Let's go ahead and let's assign it here the index variable. All right, so now we are passing here the index to the card. We have it available here. So let's go ahead and let's display it here in our template. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to display here the index property, give it a space and display here the course title. If I hit command S, we are going to see that indeed the index of the first element is zero. Then we have one, two, etc. We also have here another variable besides index, which is called count. Let me show it here in action. So I'm going to create here a new variable called count and let's assign it here the value dollar count. All right, so we can go ahead and we can display it. This is going to contain the number of elements in the iterable, in this case, 10 courses. So if you want to display it here, for example, you can display it using here this expression. Let's use here an h1 tag so that we can really see it on the screen. And let's display it here, the variable count. All right. So if we display it like this, we're going to see that this is equal to 10. So this is the total number of elements in the iterable here being uh, looped over. Notice that the at for syntax works not only for arrays, but also for anything that can be iterated over. Any JavaScript iterable also works with at4. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove here this count from our screen. Now let's continue talking about here some other options of at4. We have here a special variable that is called $first that allows us to identify the first element of the array. 
we also have here another variable called dollar last that identifies the last element in the array these variables are useful and they are convenient in order for us to for example style in a special way the first or the last element of the array so what would this look like i'm going to use here the angular input property syntax and let's say that we want to give here this course card element a css class called is first if it's the first element of the array well we can do so by using here this special property class dot and this is going to add an is first class to the class list associated to this element in the dom so we are going to be adding here is first if it's the first element of the array so we need to pass in here a logical expression that evaluates to true or false and so if first is true then the class is first is going to be added here to the course card and let's do something similar just for demonstration purposes here using another css class is last that is going to be added to this element if it's the last element of the array and if you are wondering where these two classes can be found you can find them here on the styles file all right so we are just using this file to quickly give to our test application some styles that we need for this demonstration later on in the course we are going to show you a better way of handling component styles in angular so this styles file is just for demonstration purposes of this feature that we have here so is first is going to be applied to the first element of the array is last to the last element so if i hit command s we're going to see that indeed we get here a border top in the first element of the array just like we can see here there is a border top that is gray and then in the last element of the array we should see a border at the bottom so if we scroll down we're going to see that indeed there is a border at the bottom to finish this lesson let's go ahead and let's introduce here a couple of other useful properties of at4 so we have here the even property so this is assigned via dollar even and we have here the corresponding odd property so here this is going to be assigned if the index is an even or odd number this is useful for styling even and odd elements differently so let me go ahead and let me define here the odd property that is being assigned here dollar odd and here even is being assigned dollar even and let's see this here in action i have created here a css class is even that is going to be applied only if the even variable is true and let's go ahead and let's fill in here also is odd this is going to be assigned only if the element is odd and if we now refresh our application we're going to see that indeed we get here different background styles for even and odd elements and this corresponds to the css classes that we have here even elements have a light gray background and here odd elements have light blue background so with this we have covered all the features of the at4 syntax so now in our next lesson we're going to dive deeper into the notion of a tracking function before doing that i think that it's worth mentioning that here these variables that we have been using this is just so if we want to rename the index into something else but nothing prevents us from using dollar index directly here in our template if we want and the same goes for any other variable here so if we remove here first we can always refer to it using dollar first so if i hit command s you can see that everything is still working correctly as expected